Hey guys and welcome to my first YouTube tutorial. Today the topic is black and white and how to achieve this amazing look in Photoshop. It, it looks something like this. What for me in black and white is really important, what I love is when you extract all the let's say all the colors, what you're doing basically is to you take away the surroundings, which is, um, this is how I feel about it. So when you take away the surroundings, what is left behind is really just the look of the person you photographed or the landscape. You can feel way more the silence, maybe as well what this person were thinking. And this is why I love black and white because it makes a picture so simple and it reduces itself to just what you photographed. The first thing we want to do is to open Photoshop. I already opened it and I imported a picture of a recent shooting I had. It's a fashion shooting with the lovely Anastasia. Um, it's a color photo, so I'm going to walk you through the process how I achieved this really strong black and white look and that we're going to start right now. First you want to do is to duplicate the layer by Command G um, or you just right click here and duplicate layer. So after we've done that, First, what we are going to do is to press black and white, which is here on the top. So, as you can see, all these options for color are opening. What is really important when you do this is that you move them as well, because, for example, if you have a blue ocean or a blue sky and you move the blues, um, in this case we don't have a blue sky, but I'm going to show you what is going to happen. So you're going to choose the blues and make it in a different black and white, if that makes sense. So for example, here, if you turn on the blues, nothing is happening. That's because the original picture, as you can see, is almost with no blue in it, so there's a lot of orange. So when we do black and white, for example, in this case, which is a lot of reds, a lot of yellows, if we move the yellows, you can see it really changes a lot the picture. For example, if I pull down the reds, it makes it really contrasty could be funny as well, but we're not want to do this right now. So let's go back. Okay, black and white. So first, I always love to put on the levels. Let's open this so you can see it a little bit better. I pull on the blacks a little bit, not too much because I want to see here still the details. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit down so you still maintain this nice detail over here and push up as well the highlights but not too much so it doesn't burn out so maybe a little bit back okay so there's already some changes like before as you created the black and white picture not every picture is meant for black and white so um i often when i photograph i choose already in the beginning to do it black and white not always of course sometimes it turns out to be better in color to be better in black and white um, in this case, I just choose a picture I already shot and show you how I do this black and white style, which is really strong, really edgy, a lot of contrast, which of course is something I like. This is not something you have to do as well, exactly the same. I just want to show you how I do it in Photoshop in a really quick and easy way. So, um, after we've done that, after we adjusted the levels, we're going to open the curves as well do the same things, let's maybe two dots here, just pull down the blacks a little bit again, a little bit the highlights to the top. As you can see, a l there is now a lot, a lot of contrast. Um, what I like to do as well is I go back to the layer, so we're on the right spot, um, and I do the same thing like basically makeup works, so we're gonna dodge and burn, so make to make it even more dramatic, to have more contrast in the picture. So. Let's open Dutch tool, exposure, not too much, I would say around 8. I always prefer to go a little bit softer and go over it twice or three times, just it's not too much or overdone in case I always can go back. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Perfect. So now we're in the Dutch tool. I just want to highlight the eyes a little bit, maybe on the spot right here. And maybe here on this side as well. Always take sure that you always have a light in the eyes. Like here, this reflection and this reflection. 
which is really nice because it gives it like a living look to the picture. Um, this is something, of course, I do in my pictures. There is a lot of different styles of black and white. I like the edgy style with a lot of contrast, powerful, so with a little light burst in the eyes, so the eyes really pop out and transmit an emotion, a feeling. So let's continue. Um, after we've done that, I'm gonna do the same thing with the burn tool. Um, about exposure, same, let's go like nine. Make the size a bit bigger. Make sure the hardness is all the way down so you don't see the edges when you're touching. So here I just want to have a little bit more darkness. Not too much. As well on top, maybe here a little bit. On the sides. Here. Okay. I think that's already all right. What I love about black and white pictures is to have a little bit grain in it. I don't like when it looks too digital, too sharp. So I always like to put a little grain on top just to make it a little bit more living so you can almost touch the picture. So this is a really easy step in Photoshop. You just go up to filter and then, um, sorry, noise, add noise. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. So we can see how much noise we're putting in. I always love to go to the eye. As you can see, it's a color picture because we're in another, um, in another layer. So make sure to press monochromatic and maybe this is too much right now. So maybe make it like six or eight. This really depends on the picture. If you already have a lot of grain in your pictures, which a lot of my pictures have as well because I love to shoot in low light in uh, with available light, a little bit more dark. So it really depends as well on your photography. But okay, let's press OK. So we can see there's already a little nice grain in there. So what the last thing I want to do now is to open just the simple brightness and contrast and just pull up the contrast a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So I just merged all the layers I did this because I know I'm finished with the picture. If you're not sure yet, or just maybe save it first as a PSD, as a Photoshop file, um, in case if you're really sure about the result, you can leave it that way. What I always love to do is to have a copy and color. So just in case in the future editings, I wanna change something, um, I have a copy and color as well, so I don't have to make the whole process again. A little trick of mine, which I love using, if it's, especially if it has to be really quick, and I just want to have it to boost up the contrast a little bit and in a really easy way. What I love to do is to copy the layer and then you go to soft light. Now you can see it's too much, but you can, of course, the opacity, pull it down and then you can slowly increase it to see. Oh, that was too fast. Maybe over here. I love this. This is really beautiful. So this is how it looked before, this is how it looks now. Um, what is really important is that don't overdo it. Go in slowly, step by step, and increase a little bit the contrast. Play with the Dutch and Burn tool. So thank you very much for watching my first YouTube tutorial. Please let me know in the comments how you liked it, what do you want to see more in the future. As well, please give me some critique if there is something you didn't like. And please consider subscribing and put a thumbs up on the video. And see you next time. Bye-bye.